So you don't like UV unwrapping and you feel like you suck at it. And you're also confused as to why anybody would ever enjoy it. Well, perhaps this tutorial can help you out. And maybe, just maybe, you'll enjoy it too. I'm going to UV this pipe wrench I made for rust. And we're going to do it in a really simple way. And so to start, I've just remo removed all existing UVs so we can start from scratch. I tend to UV the model separated by loose parts. It just helps me to isolate each section of the mesh nicely and helps me organize and trudge through the UV. So what we're going to do is use the flat faces to our advantage and use an operation called select linked flat faces, which will select all the faces that are flat. And I have this operation hotkeyed and you can find it by using the search model and changing its hotkey from there. And then what we'll do is use the select boundary loop operation, which will select the boundary edges of our face selection. And then we can just deselect the edges that we don't need and then mark it with the seam. I've got that hot keyed up as M. You can just go to the UV menu at the top and select it from there or change the hot key. Again, I use the linked flat faces coupled with the select boundary selection to make quick work of the marking of seams. And now I just want to join up from that edge so it's a nice closed UV. And I'm just checking around to see where I can do next to see if it's all seamed up on that side. This workflow has really sped up my entire workflow for UVing and it's one of the reasons why I enjoy it so much because it's actually not that difficult. Again, uh, basically mirror the other side. I'm going to give each face of these teeth a seam because of their angle is obtuse enough to warrant a sharp edge. If the angle was round enough like the top, then I wouldn't bother. So when you select a face and hit the seam button, it will create a seam on every edge that that face is connected to, which makes for quick seam work, really. As I just mentioned, a lot of the marking of seams is based on angle. Generally speaking, if the angle of two joined faces are obtuse enough, meaning 90 degrees or more, I'll definitely create a seam there and I'll sharpen or harden that edge. This will help mitigate any shading gradients in the normal map when you bake it out. I'm just going to zoom past this part because it's nothing interesting really. I'm just using the edge loop operation to make quick selections of these teeth edges and marking them with a seam. And after this is done, I'll give the mesh a quick look over and make sure I've made every seam I think I'll need to make. Okay, that's looking good. I'll hit unwrap, which I've hotkey to you. And honestly, Blender's default unwrapping algorithm does a pretty great job for hard surface models. And so I'm pretty happy with it. I've just noticed though some slight distortions on the side islands, and so I'm going to want to project those from the side view to have a more accurate UV of those flat faces. So I can select the flat faces within those scene borders quite easily with select linked all and then project from view making sure that I'm in the correct orthographic axis and then I'll do the same on the other side so now I just want to check for any major distortions in the UV and we can do this by going to our overlays tab and enabling stretching. Dark blue means there's no stretching and that's what we want. A little stretching is okay and is almost unavoidable in some instances. So let's not worry about that. I have noticed that there is an issue here. So I've identified that there is a seam missing 
and we're just going to select those faces and then just unwrap those again. So we can't just leave these as they are. What we'll need to do is average the UV islands out by going to the UV and average island scale, which I've hot keyed to all A. So I'm pretty happy with this. So what we need to do next is to mark the seams that we have just created as sharp. As I mentioned before, this will help prevent any gradients in our normal map when we bake, which is a big no-no in our hard surface artwork. Sometimes the gradients are unavoidable, but we want to try and eliminate that as best as possible. I use UV Toolkit Sharp Edges from UV Islands, but if you don't have that, then select an edge with a seam, then go to your Select menu in the 3D view and navigate to Select Similar and then Seam, and then just mark a sharp. Again, I'm just checking for any distortions for a final pass. And I'm pretty happy with that. I typically add a checker map which helps visualize distortions on the mesh, but I also do it just to help visually see what I have left to UV. And so for this next section of the pipe wrench, I'm going to do the exact same method of UVing as before. And so I'll speed this next section up just a little bit. Now I'm going to add a seam at the bottom here just before the curved end of the grip. I do this so I don't have one long strip of a UV island which will prevent consistent texel density. So to break it up, I keep the seams there. I'm pretty happy with those seams. So now, just like with the first segment, I'm going to unwrap it, look for any obvious distortions, and then project those side flat UV faces to get a more accurate unwrap. Again, Blender's algorithm is pretty great, and I don't typically need to make much alterations. So I'm pretty happy with that. I average the islands again and just make some adjustments here just so I can visualize any distortions. And there's not that many, honestly. I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll go with that. So again, sharpen edges from UV islands and then add a checker map. So this is a pretty simple piece, really. I'm just going to use the faces to create the seams on the inside and use the border edges here for the seams. And where the seam isn't going to be seen, I'll place one there. And I'm just going to unwrap that. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to quadrify these or make these straight by using UV toolkits straight in UVs. This will introduce a little bit of distortion, but not too much. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, sharpen edges and check a map. I don't know where this check map's gone, so I'll reapply that. So this is a quite straightforward piece. It's pretty much the same process again. 
You may have noticed that I've got no faces here and that's because it's not going to be seen so I just remove them. I place a seam at the bottom here just so I don't have one long strip. And unwrap them. Distortions should be pretty much perfect here, they are. But I want these straight anyway so that they don't take up too much room in the UV. Because it's basically based on a bounding box around those UVs. When calculating padding and margins. So the straighter a UV is, the less space it should technically take up on the UV. However, distortions can be introduced from that, so we only straighten if there's minimal distortion. This bolt head is pretty straightforward. Just using a ring select to select those ring edges and then just marking them with a seam and unwrapping again. Again, checking for any stretching that I'm unhappy with and it seems all good for me. So now onto the hardest part I would say and this is mainly for the seam placement. To begin with I just select the flat faces on either side and I'm pretty happy where those seams are going to be. So I just want to join those up. see some few issues with the mesh triangulation. And the interior part is a little bit trickier, namely of the way the mesh is constructed. So I just want to do some manual work here first before doing the face selection, just to get that loop border correct. I don't want to, I just can't help it. I've just got to sort those unconnected verts out. So now select those faces and then just join those up. Pretty happy with that. So select the border and then mark as the seam and do the same for the other side. Now for the inside, it's a little bit tricky. I don't really want long pieces of the UV to take up too much room, so I tend to split these softened I guess you could say softened edges in half where they're least likely to be seen. And put a seam there. Don't forget to join that up. And let's see how that reacts to the unwrap. There is some distortion here. What we can do is go into a UV mode and we can see what's selected there. Let's mark that and then unwrap it again. And there's again there's some distortion here and it's on the inside. I just missed it there. There we go. And unwrap that again. And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see for stretching. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So same again, sharpen edges from the seams and apply a checkerboard map. So what we do now is select all of the mesh, all the parts, and we can UV it together, which is something that I, I love about Blender. And we average the islands out. And to pack UVs, I use UV Packmaster, which I highly recommend. And these are the settings I use. 
I make sure rotation enabled at 90 degrees and pre-rotation is disabled. I'll leave the pixel margin and padding at 6 and texture size at 1024 for this example. Make sure heuristic and advanced heuristic search is enabled with a search time of 60 seconds and then hit pack and we can watch it do its magic. I've just noticed that some of the faces are angled funny so what we'll do is straighten those out before packing again and because we have pre-rotation disabled enabled it will stop the packer from rotating the islands as we hit pack. This should give us some really nice results. So because we've got heuristic search enabled, it's just going to continually search for 60 seconds the best and most optimal pack based on our settings, or until we hit escape. And when it finds a better solution, you'll see the UV change. For this tutorial, I'm not going to wait for the entire 60 seconds, so we can hit escape to stop. And I'm just going to rotate these UV islands to prevent any further pixelation, as diagonal UV border edges actually need to occupy more pixels to get the same resolution as if they were vertically or horizontally aligned. Now I'm just going over the, the rest of the UV just to make sure if there's any improvements that I can make. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a decent UV. Sure, we could tighten up the padding a little bit, but for this tutorial, it's a pretty good job. The last thing I want to do is make sure those bottom edges are not marked as sharp to prevent unwanted seams. Because every edge needs a seam, but not every seam needs a hard edge. And that's it, really. I think this is quite a simple approach to UVing hard surface assets. The process will most definitely be different for characters and in some instances environment art and meshes with tileable materials. But for hard surface assets like weapons and props, this is a good foundation to go from. So I hope this helps. Peace.